Welcome to Italics, television for the Italian American experience. I'm your host, Anthony Tamburri. On this episode of Italics, we had the opportunity to visit the exhibition titled A Legacy of Making, 21 Contemporary Italian American Artists at the John D. Calandra Italian American Institute, curated by Joanne Matera and Joseph Schorra from the Calandra Institute. Additionally, we were present at the National Italian American Foundation for its 48th anniversary gala held last October in Washington, D.C. to celebrate the rich heritage and achievements of Italians and Italian Americans. We joined Joanne Matera during the exhibition's installation. Receiving her insightful guidance through the various artworks, subsequently we had the pleasure of engaging with several artists during the opening event held on September 27th at the Calandra Institute. Between like 306. Nice to be tall. <laughs> five six on a good day. I'm tall. Well, I used to be five two and I shrank. So uh... we know that we know that they have to uh, follow the through line. So mm -hmm. I think like this, or even perhaps a little closer, like that. Then bam. Yeah. Yeah. Which is great. And then you have more color. I think it could even stand to be pointed down a little bit further. Okay. Viola, travel, the bundles. So this is... I think that's a very nice corner. Yeah, for sure. There's no thematic thread that connects the work, so we have to think about uh, think about how it works chromatically, how it works in terms of size. I mean, the thread is that uh, this is all work by artists who are Italian-American, some of whom are very definitely influenced by their heritage. I mean, the Amori is making art based on her family history. Filo della vita, you know, her lifeline, which travels in red across her montage of work. Diana Gonzalez Gandolfi is making art based on her grandfather fought with Garibaldi, moved to Argentina. She grew up in Argentina in an Italian family where they spoke Spanish. Then she and her family moved to Colombia and then Indonesia and then came to New York. So her work is all about traveling. It's all about finding a place in the world for herself. She's finally here in the United States. She's a citizen. But we have our South American, our Buenos Aires connection there in her maps. And then Lisa Zukowski creates bundles. You know, she's wrapping her family history, unlike Biamore, whose history is out visible, she's wrapping her family history in, in the bundles. Angelica Bergamini, who comes from a family of Tuscan shipmasters, and her work is all about a more cosmic journey, but, you know, the journey from birth to death. But, but it also, with the, with the ocean, is suggestive of the journey over. From, from Italy to here. There's a whole tradition of needlework and handwork that so many women, myself included, grew up with. Um, we didn't have quite the same pressure, you know, to create the corello that, that, that young Italian women had to do, but we all grew up sewing, knitting, crocheting. Here's Chris Costin who's working with uh, making collages out of thread and fabric. Yeah. and Jennifer Ciceri, who's making lace out of thread and acrylic paint, not actually lace making. And my own painting, which is suggestive of fabric. Elisa Darigo uh, learned to sew from her grandmother and and now she's making structures and sculptures uh, 
that, uh, you know, I, I, everyone who taught us to sew would be horrified at, at what we're making because it has nothing to do with tradition. And uh, This is very modern. Yes, it is. It is. But we could not have made this had we not learned the traditional stuff. Gianluca Bianchino, who came from Avellino after the earthquake in 1980 and in, is living in New Jersey making art. John Monti, who is drawing from the Neapolitan Baroque. Mm -hmm. You know, he calls himself a cultural Catholic. Um, he's wow. interested in the church, in the expression of uh, uh, wealth and excess in the church. Um, so he's coming up with these fabulous bouquets, so to speak. So. What is the material? Uh, it's neoprene or, or resin. Oh, okay. Something that's yes. malleable in its in its formation and then it hardens. And then there are some artists who are not drawing from their heritage particularly, but but their heritage has informed who they are as people and as artists, even if what you're seeing is not necessarily uh, expressive of something. Italian, of an Italian idea or concept. Sure. This is an artist named Timothy McDowell, and although he's got a nice Scottish name, his mother is a Macellari, and uh, so when he's in Italy, he's Timoteo Macellari, so <laughs> very different from Tim McDowell. Uh, but he's um, uh, very rooted in, in his family history in Northern Italy. Karen Schifano, whose parents are artists, whose grandparents came over, uh, and she's making work that is not specifically Italian. But her work is about openings, opera stages, uh, mouth openings, circus rings, anything that suggests um, an opening and the space around it. John's work, of course, you can see the, through the visual language. This is, he brings quotidian gestures as an art form. This is uh, Dominic Lombardi, who has integrated some of his father's and grandfather's woodworking tools into his sculpture. He learned woodworking from them. Very contemporary and, and uh, in its kind of cartoon quality, and yet you look and you see these you know, these elements that are from his history. He's mashed them together, his history and his expression as a contemporary artist. So, I mean, it's just so interesting that, you know, every artist has a story and the stories all connect in a lovely way. Yes. Nancy Azara grew up with her Sicilian grandparents and she went to college in the 1940s. She studied fashion and costume design, but something in her wanted to work with wood. And, you know, young women in the 40s, and Italian-American women, were not encouraged to, to make sculpture mm -hmm. like this. But she found it in her to do that, and, you know, feminism from the 1970s empowered her. And her work is about connecting to the spiritual. So this is called Tree Altar. Um, her work connects to something greater. She is probably our oldest artist. I think she's about 84 or 86. Oh, and this is Denise Sfaraga. She's drawing from nature, but she's abstracting it, and she's thinking about growth, seeds, life, uh, and, you know, regrowth. So, Miranda, she's going to take this wall. She takes the lace. She dyes it red, and she sews it together, and she makes installations of all of this lace. Much of it is Italian lace. And uh, when, when I see it, you know, I'm thinking about the blood of, of all the fingers that were pricked in the making of, you know, sewing and the making of needlework. 
uh, the blood of childbirth, the blood of, you know, and all the hours of, of women's labor that goes into making handwork. So it will be a wall of, of, uh, of lace that she will install specifically for this space. And how many artists are in this? 59. Wow. Yeah. 59 distinct personalities. Not all of them amenable to suggestion. Sure. I said, you have 500 words for an essay. And then this was my essay that, that contextualizes the this work. So cool. You know John's work. Yeah. There. 21 contemporary Italian-American artists. Many artists don't right. want to talk about their work, and they say, well, my art should speak for itself. But the fact is, you really need to talk about the work. The artists need to talk about their work, and, and a curator needs to talk about the work, because you have a much deeper and richer experience when you learn what it is that, you know, that connects work in an exhibition, for instance. Exactly. And, exactly. and you don't get that unless you get the initial information from the artist. Yes. And, and then you can share that with others. So that piece honors my grandmother, Conchettina Deorio Piscopo. And these were earrings that belonged to her and my great-grandmother. And this, these beads were my great-grandmother's beads from La Pio in Italy. And I'm wearing my mother's favorite ring. So I have all the women of my family with me. And so that piece honors that legacy of my grandmother. There were pictures when she was a little girl in Italy being tutored in La Pio of her teacher. And there were even pictures of her at American International College, where she went as an immigrant for two years, 1911 to 13. So it's really, it's the part of the following the thread panel, Filo de la Vita, this red thread that follows the line of my family. And that was a theme that was in an Ellis Island exhibit that I did at the turn of the century, 1999 and 2000. And that panel was one of the panels at Ellis Island. My grandmother was the inspiration for it. All the stories that she told me when I was a little girl, I remembered them. And I still have a piece of land that's in my name that she gave me when I was 13 years old. And it's still in my family's name, in La Pio, the town that we came from. I was born in Italy. I moved here. I was 29, 30 years old. I became uh, an American citizen uh, in 2017. And so water is what connects my two lands, Italy, where I have my family, and New York, where I have the family that I've built in the last 20 years. My work is usually in the form of sculpture, wall sculptures, relief, uh, constructivist, geometric abstraction. I'm inspired by forces of nature, geology, astronomy, space, um, so I tend to incorporate some optics in the work, like in this case there's a magnifying lens that's been bent in the center to sort of play with the space. This is part of a larger series of currently nine pieces, they're called Bubbleverse. So it's about the universe being a bubble. Hi, I'm John Avaluto and uh, I have a work that, uh, in this exhibition called Due Fach, which is behind me here. Uh, and it sort of portrays uh, more of the stereotypical hand gestures found in Italian-American culture, uh, along with some other iconography that sort of lends to stereotypical ideas of what Italian culture is. Uh, it's made from a layered acrylic paint uh, that's been laser cut and also etched. Uh, in order to come up with a quasi-abstract uh, motif. 
So the two gestures that are in it are uh, basically the chef's kiss, which means something, you know, something is really great, something's wonderful, and then the other, which is, uh, I believe they say, non mi frega, which is this. So something that, uh, <laughs> that you don't care about. So it has two faces to it. And, uh, you know, I like to think about the ideas about these sort of stereotypes that we associate with Italian-Americans as having two different worlds to, to live in. Something that can define you, but not really totally encapsulate everything that you are. People who have lace that they've kept from their families, from their mothers, their aunties, their nonnas, their bisnonnas, um, and don't know what to do with it. So they send it to me and I created what is called the lace archive. I document all of the lace. And then I hand dye each piece. Each piece is dyed four or five times using a cochineal insect dye, which is a natural historic dye. And then it is hand sewn into these very large installation works. They usually will span like a whole wall. Um, and so there are numerous of them. And th every, single do every single piece in this has been donated and sent to me. So people are trusting me with this family legacies, and I feel like it's making visible this very strong and powerful history of women, women's work, women's work in the domestic sphere, uh, the economic labor of lace and how it supported families, but also the labor of care inside the home where women would create these objects for the family, and that these families have treasured these and kept them, and now they're sending them to me, so which I feel like is a great honor. And so I document it all before it gets used in a work. So there are lists of the people who've donated. Um, and then the ex votos are traditionally used in, um, they're representations of the body that are used in, in request, in gratitude, in devotion, and in memoriam. Is there an Italian-American artist or contemporary artist? I think there are many answers to that. Uh, but the very fact that, that you are doing this, uh, that we should reproduce, definitely, I think uh, it's a, a good starting point to deepen the subject. The NIAF's 48th Anniversary Gala was a resounding success with a visit from the President of the United States and First Lady Jill Biden. The NIAF Gala honored several distinguished individuals, including Jerry Cardinale, founder and managing partner of Redbird Capital Partners, Stefano Domenicali, President and CEO of Formula One, Veronica Berti Bocelli, Vice Chair of the Andrea Bocelli Foundation, legendary musician and songwriter Neil Giraldo, and Dr. Sara Farnetti, acclaimed medical doctor and scientist, all for their outstanding achievements and contributions to various industries. Andrea has a big, big art, and I learned from him that everything that is possible to say yes, you really have to say yes. Yes, we can do it together. And as you always repeat, alone we can do a lot, but together we can do a lot more. So that is the, that's the, the, the idea, the drive is passion, is life, and our life too. So all the time that we are together and we need to take a decision that can really can have an impact in some other people's life, it's a yes, we do it. We need something that uh, make our diagnosis most precise. Uh, for example, if we can use uh, the, the, the intervi uh, artificial intelligence to understand the biochemical difference between the individuals, we can also decide the, the right treatment to prevent and treat the diseases. The Italian work ethic that my grandparents, when they came over uh, from Italy, and my parents, uh, what they exhibited is what you know I try to live up to. And so that's how we operate. We're, we're low key, we're humble, we work hard, uh, and we try to give something back to the places that uh, we work in. And that's what I hope, I'm hoping to do with Milan. You know, F1 is a community. Everyone is talking about technology, everyone is talking about uh, sport, but at the end, the heart is human being. And I'm an Italian, and uh, proudly Italian, and uh, the values of Italians 
it's, it's a must for me to, to, to translate into our daily work and daily job. The Italian community is very prominent in the F1 world and, uh, and that's an incredible uh, heritage that is the foundation to create even a better future for our community in this sport. Ladies and gentlemen, it is truly a personal honor and privilege to introduce the first Italian-American in the White House, our First Lady of the United States of America, Dr. Dil Jacopa Biden. Dr. Biden. I had known that my family had passed through the island, but I was surprised to find their records there. The story that they left behind in black and white a story that has gone on to become a part of my family's mythology. And in the loops and the swirls of their handwriting, I watched as their ages shifted and reformed, dates adjusting to fit this story that they wanted to tell. As they signed their names to begin a new life, names that eventually transformed from a Gaetano and Conchetta Giacapa to Gaetano and Conchetta Jacobs. Think of how our ancestors would feel today if they saw this room. This is what they hoped to give us when they signed their names at Ellis Island, a future where we can work hard and reach for every possibility. So let's continue to share this country we call home living out their hope and passing on their dreams and values to our children. And now I want to introduce another, maybe a little bit Italian American, my husband, Joe Biden. Joe? <laughs> You know, I may be Irish, but I'm not stupid. <laughs> I married Dominic Giacoppa's granddaughter. And I want to tell you something. The, uh, I grew up in a neighborhood I, we, when everything cold died in Scranton when my dad moved us down to Delaware. He had lived as a kid in a town called Claymont, Delaware. And if your name didn't end in O, you had a problem. Especially if you went to St. Lena, if you went to Holy Rosary Catholic School like I did. Please sit down. Don't stand for me. Yeah. Come on, sit down, sit down. Thank you very much. The embodiment of a sense of imagination. You know, Michelangelo has famously re remarked that he saw the angel in the marble and I carved until I set it free. To me, that is the essence what Italian Americans have done for this country and done for art and literature for their entire history. They just carve until they set it free. And you have a whole hell of a lot of angels starting with this one right here. Thank you, thank you very much for letting me come out with you. Appreciate it. Food is a profound cultural expression that connects the United States and Italy. Our cuisine is a shared heritage that celebrates the importance of eating well and wisely. Therefore, I invite all of us to join in this mission to educate, inspire, and take action for a longer and healthier life. There's so many things to be thankful for in your life. Um, this is such a great honor. Nayef, uh, thank you. I am really honored to get this. this. is an incredible day, incredible evening for me. Thank you. My father was a hard-working carpenter coming to America with no money, learned to trade, and every day I try to walk in his shoes and in his shadow. He was by far the greatest man, the kindest man, the toughest man I've ever known. So in 1981, I retired him. Every day I spoke to him, he said thank you. Every single day, never missed a day ever. Thank you to you all to celebrate uh, our identity and to recognize American citizens of Italian descent who through their hard work in ancestor built 
a cohesive and well-established community that has contributed so significantly to shaping this great country as we know it today. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. It takes just one single breath to say thank you. Yet, it is also true that even a lifespan is not enough to say thank you, because gratitude is a sour though, the real starter of every single day. Gratitude is the energy behind every charitable action. It nurtures the natural desire to do something good for other people. Dear friend of the Nayef, I would love to express my most affectionate gratitude to all of you for this award that ideally I share with every member of the largest extended family of the Andrea Bocelli Foundation. I'm lucky in that I love what I do, and there really isn't a delineation between what I do and who I am. And in that regard, I'm incredibly fortunate and grateful for the tremendous people that I have in my life, many of whom are here tonight. You know, there's an old saying that you're only as good as the people you have around you, or as our friend and former AC Milan player Zlatan Ibrahimovic said recently, the individual comes with the collective, and if the collective does good, then the individual will do good. As we close out 2023, we want to take the opportunity to wish you all a happy holiday season and a healthy and prosperous 2024. 2024 marks the 45th year of the Calandra Institute, and we look forward to celebrating this important milestone with you all during the year. Thanks for watching this episode of Italics. I'm Anthony Tamburri. Arrivederci alla prossima puntata.